What's up, YouTube? I mean, it's your homeboy, whatever, man. Just coming at you real quick. Um, I'm on my search for the best cheap cigars. And today, I am smoking the Flor de Oliva Gold. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to go ahead and light this puppy up. See what it's all about. I punched it with a uh, my favorite hollow point gear cigar punch made from a spent AK-47 shell. Looking to see what this smokes like. It was cheap. I paid $4.99 for it. Let's see what it do. It's soft. The tip is soft, so you got to be careful if you punch in. I thought, you know, it, the soft tip, sometimes you worry if you got to put a bunch of pressure on it to get it to punch, that it might split the cigar, damage it. Uh, but you can see it held up pretty well. So, yeah. Let's see what this thing's all about. I'm going to smoke into it in a little bit and then come back and share some thoughts. So as you can see, I'm still smoking here. Um, I've made it through essentially the first third of this cigar. Um, overall, the construction is pretty decent thus far. Um, it did canoe on me a little bit, you know, so I got the other side to catch back up. So now it's looking good. Um... You see it's got a nice, easy draw to it. Uh, not too easy, but, you know, uh, it, it, it seems like this cigar is pretty, I mean, you know, it's pretty solid. Uh, the wrapper is soft. Um, it's a veiny wrapper. I don't know how well you can, you know, that shows up in there. There was a spot down closer to the bottom. You can't really see where, you know, they had, it looks like, uh, almost like, I don't know, like they patched it or something like that. Um, hasn't went out on me. Um, from a burn perspective, I need to start timing my burns because this has probably been going for about it's probably been about 15 minutes. I don't know. Maybe 15, about 15 minutes. Um, you know, it's not bad so far. Not the greatest. Um, it's got a little bit of creamy taste to it. Not much. Especially for this is a, a Ecuadorian wrapper. So, you know, a Connecticut shade wrapper. So it's not as creamy as some of the other Connecticut's that I've smoked. However, there is a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, it holds the ash pretty good. Um, man, I'm tripping. These people keep, there. there's somebody moving a bunch of furniture on like a, uh, on like a little cart. And they walk by my house probably six times. So I don't know if they moving from one house to another or they didn't went to a yard sale and they buying all this furniture. But at this rate, it's going to take these fools like a week if they was actually moving. But anyway, they ain't got nothing to do with the video sidetrack. It just keeps throwing me off because they keep walking by my house. Um. So, yeah, you know, Connecticut shade wrapper, Ecuadorian wrapper. Um. Let's see. Nicaraguan binder and filler. So it's it's got a little bit of um 
It's got a woody. I say I would say the strongest taste to it is it's got a woody type taste to it. Maybe a little bit of almond as well. Um, but I don't know uh, for this one. It's not really cedar like taste. It's not really pine type of taste. I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. It's a burnt wood taste, but maybe it's it's more maybe a little bit like oak. Yeah, I can see it being more like an oak type flavoring. That's a better way to describe it. Um, there's really not a whole lot of hints of of much else. Now, I'll say that's the the probably the the creamiest taste and draw out of the the whole thing that I've just had. So maybe as I'm moving into the second third, maybe there'll be some more hints, but uh, not a whole lot of different flavors, man. So. Again, you know, a little bit of creaminess, um, more of a, a wood burning, you know, maybe oak type taste and, uh, you know, the, the nuttiness that's in it is maybe more like a little almond, you know, um, not bad so far for a cheap cigar. I'm going to smoke a little bit more and see if I got any other thoughts to share. So I'm pissed off because I just recorded almost 10 minutes of me talking and uh, my memory on my phone filled up and stopped my video in the middle of the video and didn't save it. I deleted a bunch of stuff off my phone earlier, but it put it in the trash instead of actually deleting it so it didn't free up the space that I thought it did. <sighs> so, okay, um, obviously, just about done with the second third, moving into the third, the final third of this cigar. Construction has held up since I had to relight it and fix the canoeing. Um, you know, small run, you could say, but not going back to the canoe status. Maybe if I was to let this go, you know, it would canoe again. Um, probably not. You know, it doesn't seem to be that that much of a uh, run that it would turn into canoeing but um what can i say man second third much like the first it is creamier in the second third um i think the creaminess is is more prevalent maybe than the uh, oak taste that i tasted before um still a good smoke i had high expectations for this cigar uh, be it that although it was a cheap cigar, um, it is an Oliva grown cigar. So it comes from the same farms as the other Oliva cigars. Um, let me see if I can go back and find some of the stuff that I talked about <laughs> uh, before I got shut off and my video deleted. Flor de Oliva comes from one of the premier spots in Nicaragua, the Oliva Tobacco Farms. Hence, again, my expectations for this cigar. Um, the Flor de Oliva emanates an aroma like no other. With its deep, complex flavor, this Puro is a smooth, medium-bodied cigar that sports a golden Connecticut wrapper. So, nice, smooth, oily wrapper. Well, not smooth, because you can feel the veins in it. it is, I don't know how well you can see uh, vein-wise. The band came off really easy, which is good, because, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of glue that has them stuck to the cigar. You got to smoke it down until it gets hot, and even then, sometimes it'll still pull off part of your leaf and put a hole in your cigar. Um, so, didn't have to worry about that. Um, can't remember if I said it before. Um, Nicaraguan, Nicaragua uh, binder and filler, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Um, what else on here did I want to share? Oh, now. 
when you go out and you buy these, they do sell these. Obviously, the one I have is a Connecticut. They do have one with a natural wrapper that is darker as well. Um, I have not smoked one of those. I don't know how it compares, um, but just, you know, something to put out there. Now, again, I, I paid four ninety nine for this cigar. Um, I bought it as a single at a local cigar shop here that tends to um, price their cigars a little bit more maybe than some of the other places in town. And I'm okay with that. I like that place. Uh, you know, they have a great selection. Um, it's the closest to my house that has a good selection. Um, there's, I'm, you know, I'm not looking to bash anybody, but there's, so I won't say no names, but there is, um, a cigar shop that is closer that, you know, I, I love going in there to smoke, but, um, selection wise, they don't always have the greatest selection. So, um, I tend to filter off to this other place, which is fine. You know, I don't mind spending 50 cents, maybe sometimes a dollar more. Um, you know, to go and know that they're going to have what I'm looking for when I get there or have a decent, you know, variety to choose from. But, um, again, man, you know, this, this has been a great smoke four ninety nine. Um, I seen singles priced between the four to, to four fifty range online. Um, uh, so not drastically different, you know, but, um, than what I pay, but you know, you're, you're talking 10 to 20% cheaper than what I pay for a single cigar. Um, and then as far as buying these in bundles, now bundles is where you save. I seen a 25 bundle that was priced at $35. That's less than $2 cigar. You know, that's what the, the dollar 50 range, maybe a little bit less. Um, you know, that's, that's not bad, you know? Um, so if it's, you know, so one of the things that I talked about in my best cheap cigar series is sometimes you want to grab something, smoke it. It might be 30 degrees outside or something like that, depending on where you live. Um, and you don't want to smoke the whole thing. Maybe you want to come back and smoke the rest later um, or something like that. Or maybe you just want to smoke what you can, toss it. Um, great cigar for either one of those two scenarios because the taste um, and quality is, is pretty consistent throughout. Um You know, so it's not a waste of money if you don't smoke the whole thing because it's so cheap. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're a daily cigar smoker and you don't want to break the bank, um, this is a great thing to have in your daily arsenal. You know, um, a lot of the you know reviews that I was looking at um, or different data, a lot of people for some reason seem to they, they they qualify this as a medium body cigar. To me, it's not medium. I guess it depends on your palate, of course. Uh, but then I also did see some that said that in the final third, um, you know, it got more flavorful. Um, so that's where I'm at. You know, I'm getting there. Um. see if I can find I see you know I had all this I read read through a couple of things and I might have closed them actually because you know I didn't think I was gonna need to go back to them and then my video cut off and deleted itself so thank you phone A lot of people, good everyday cigar, great everyday cigar. Now, someone did say that they felt that the, the draw was, uh, I'm talking, so it's going out over here on the end. But uh, a lot of people were, well, not a lot of people, but someone said that uh, they smoke a lot of these and the draw is typically tight. Well, my draw has been loose, so I don't know if you're, you know, bundle to bundle if they're not consistent. Maybe that's something to think about. Someone said a pinch of pepper on the retro hill. Um, I haven't tasted any pepper, to be honest. So this is interesting. 
I noticed some of the comments in, indicated that this cigar had a difficult draw. The cigar is packed very tightly, which while, and this is a customer review, uh, the cigar is packed very tightly, which while giving an even burn, this contributed to the draw problem. I decided to try an experiment. Normally, I cut my cigars with a double guillotine type cutter. I bought an, and I don't know, XR, X-I-K-A-R. Fool come fly. I'm gonna go do a burnout in front of his house. Anyway, um, I bought a um, Xcar VX2 V cutter, V cut cutter. This made all the difference in the world, at least to me. Now the draw is perfect. So that's interesting. Um, I didn't do a V cut, but I did punch the cigar, but I didn't cut the cap. So. I wonder, uh, you know, if how you decide to, you know, punch this cigar or cut it uh, makes a difference in the draw. That, that's interesting. But this person also didn't say how they were um, cutting their cigars previous to that. So this person thought it was surprising that people said that it has a tight draw. Didn't mention how he was cutting them before. So I don't know if he was punching them. I don't know if he was, um, you know, doing a straight cut or something like that. So how he comes to the conclusion that the V cut uh, makes the difference, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe he ran into some that smoke tight. I, you know, um, that's the interesting thing though. You know, you do these reviews. Um, you know, I come and I share my opinion. You can go look at, you know, customer reviews online, and a lot of people have a completely different opinion from you. Um, but the a lot of the consistent things were around the taste. Some people thought the oak that I taste was more of a cedary taste. Um, a lot of the cigars that I've smoked recently um, were heavy on the cedar. This is different than those cigars, which is why I lean more to the oak. Um, but now as I'm getting into the, the final third, um, again, the, the, premium, the creaminess is what's the most prevalent right now. I do still taste the almond. Um, that's what's prevalent. The oak has kind of um, took a back seat you can still taste it in there a little bit. Um, I think this would be a great cigar to pair with a good bourbon or whiskey, uh, maybe uh, dark rum. I'm not real big on the pairing thing, you know, but I know some people take that to heart. And most cigars, in my opinion, pair well with bourbon or whiskey. So that's almost like a cop out. But if you were going to do something different, you want to drink something different, um, a dark rum would probably be really good with this. Um, maybe a sweet cognac. If you're a brandy smoker, I think the brandy would overpower this. A brandy drinker, I think it would overpower this, and maybe throw off the taste. Um, but again, you know, who cares? If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, this is a good cigar. I would buy this cigar again. I don't know if I would put it at the top of my list of cheap cigars, but it's up there. Um, again, you know, that Monte by Monte Cristo that I reviewed that I found in the two for 10 section, which probably shouldn't be there. So that probably wasn't a fair comparison would still be my number one cigar. Uh, take that out the equation. This is probably second on my list. Good smoke, man. Good smoke. So what can I say? Um, you know, if something changes in the final third, then I'll add a little bit more to this video and crop out this part. But if not, um, just want to come through, give you my shot, my thoughts, give this cigar a thumbs up. Definitely will smoke again. Definitely a great cheap cigar. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at whatever man, W H A T E V A underscore man. Like my videos, comment. If you smoke one of these and you either share my, whether you share my opinion or whether you have a different opinion, please leave your comments in the comment section. I would love to hear others' feedback. Um, that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate it. I'm gone.